阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，阿弥。陀佛，阿弥陀佛。Thank you, everyone, for for attending this session. Today we'll continue with our Tai Shang sessions on the section three, the crimes and offenses easily committed with people in high position. Uh, we take a slow approach on this, as we already have been mentioned um, for last few weeks. Um, and we'll, we'll take our time, you know, read through the whole whole uh, uh, quote. But um, I'll push forward if there is not much content to cover or at the time. There's always content to cover. It's just my uh, my limitations, you know, the limitation of my preparedness, the limitation of my knowledge, the limitation of my um, experience in life. Um, that's the only limit. Uh, the actual book itself has an unlimited uh, way to look at it and uh, you just need to untap your own life experience and reflect upon it so always keep that in mind you know just because you know the way I present it does not reflect fully the depth of this book because I, I'm still learning from it a disclaimer in a sense so all I'm doing doing is just show you a little bit uh, of what this is about if um, there's a chance you guys can have a look in depth of what the book is through Master Ching Kong's commentaries. Um, uh, we'll, we'll already share it. I think we'll, 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 we'll share the link. Uh, Auntie, Auntie uh, Yen Zi might be uh, able to link you up uh, where to find the commentary, you know, the translated commentary of the treaties. So going back to this um, main content, we are continuing part two. People who are in high authority, these are the offenses easily committed by them. We uh, last week we talked about uh, reward, injustice, punish the innocent. We did talk about in our in this one on one session as well. Um, and I just want to add up what I, you know, our discussion from last uh, Tuesday with the um, youth group. Uh, it was uh, more insight, or more personal compared to the one I presented. Two weeks before, because um, this one, if we look on the face value, it might sound look like legal system, you know, countries, or all, all these big things. But if you apply in your daily life to your own children, to yourself, uh, to your students, you know, those day-to-day -day stuff that you go, uh, you, that you have to, um, uh, that enables you to, uh, you know, to reflect better, because we're not. Not all of us are judge. Not all of us are police officers. Not all of us are prime ministers or presidents. But a lot of us are seniors, figure to someone else. You know, maybe to your children, to your siblings, to your cousins, to your students, to your um, juniors, uh, in any capacity, family or work or uh, in tempo as well. So those that this kind of thing applies everywhere. It's just that. Uh, when you look at the face value, obviously it it originally refers to people in, you know, authority. That's what I mean by there's so many perspective and depth on this. These are all wisdom, you know. Uh, the only limit is your own experience and your own knowledge and uh, your own wisdom. So we we grow with it uh, as we reflect better. So reward injustice in the context of family might be, you know, what is not right, you encourage it. You know, the bad behavior of kids, uh, you know, there's no bad kids inherent, right? All kids are very cute and nice and when they were young and baby. But when they grow up, if you let their bad behavior run rampant and instead of exiting, I mean, uh, instead of setting a boundary of what is right and wrong, and let your children have a strong boundary of what is right and wrong. We reward what is not right and what is uh, properly not acceptable uh, uh, behavior uh, as a human. And we reward it as adult in full knowledge of it. Then we have 
also committed these offenses. Reward injustice, you know, because just because the kid oh, was small and cute and you know say silly things, which is funny, that's fine. But uh, there are times you need to set the boundaries. You need to let them know this is not correct. You know, maybe you know the hurtful words, the bullying, the um, the behaviors that are you know harmful towards the others or themselves. Uh, or even just simple things like you know didn't get what they want, throwing tantrum, and you know uh, if you allow them doing once, then they will do it again and again. They get used to it, get used to you saying okay to them, and guess what happens when they grow up and they didn't get what they want, you know. So there are many um, consequences that we cannot see yet. So we need to start from small. What is not right is called injustice. You know, you can start from a very small things, as in taking what is not belonging to yours, even though it's a pencil from classmates, or that kind of um, behavior when they uh, speak to the elders, that kind of um, very disrespectful behavior, or that kind of uh, how to say a bullying uh, demeanor. Maybe they grown, they were built better than the kids, and they were, you know, they starting to have that behavior of bully and all that, or uh, you know. Um, a saying saying uh, the action is not right in school so you need to give that sort of um, uh, boundaries setting it so you cannot reward it you m- instead you must uh, warn and punish if necessary of course be in the bounds of legal system but you still need to give them a sort of understanding things have consequences so that's what this phrase is about all right uh, if you extend it to the government and all that, obviously, um, the laws and all that, um, uh, the reward system, the merit system has to be encouraging good behavior so that a country, a society can function uh, in the way it's intended. You know, it's just common public place. It should be, you know, um, a place where everyone come together and share ideas and actually build, contribute, construct towards a better um, future. And, and that should be the goal you know of every society nations um, and the other hand punish the innocence um, it can go from negligence uh, passing sentences because you're in high authority you have the uh, power to pass sentences and sometimes because of your negligence or because things are very tricky um, no matter how uh, you might slip a few details and cause the you know the accused to be um, punished uh, with a punishment that does not befit their crime, maybe uh, excessive punishments, stuff like that. Uh, if you use it on the daily um, context, punish the innocent. Uh, it may be in a way of you know doing things not carefully uh, and causing negative consequences towards others. Um, for example, um, in 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 the sense like um, if a kids uh, or if 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 us we doing. Um, how to say uh, a report or doing a uh, dishwashing stuff like that and if we do not do it well um, you know we might uh, how to say uh, cause a lot of trouble future so if dishwashing was not uh, washed properly and the kids just you know brush teach them how to uh, dishwash and then if they didn't do it well those stains might leave on the plate and you know uh, in future some uh, other people might eat on that plate and might hurt them. I think I'm stretching a bit too far on this. Let's move on. <laughs> Killing to seize property. Yeah. It's quite obvious. Um, you know, in order to uh, hoard uh, other people's, uh, what belongs to others, you not just steal, you kill. Um, obviously, that is a big no-no. So in other ways, it can be directly, which is the obvious one, or indirectly, which is causing them, you know, losing their possession uh, through the loss of their lives or through the loss of um, their you know, ownership of it. Uh, to, to If you want to make it less serious, yeah. But this one is referring to someone who is really poisonous in, at heart and trying to use plots and machinations to get uh, what is not theirs. You know, just because they um, they are holding, they are golding, uh, uh, want want to go after other people's um, properties. They're not. That's not theirs. So 
this case uh, is also another transgression because the only people with the high position can do that, or only people in the privileged position, you know, in terms of informations, you know, the access to those private informations, those those um, off the mark, off the grid kind of uh, understanding uh, or professional way, no one's understanding. Only then they can do this kind of a uh, thing. Um, and karma is always very uh, strong at, at this stage, uh, at this kind of uh, against this kind of misdeeds. Uh, I already mentioned it last time with the team, with the uh, um, youth group. Uh, this is worth sharing because um, this is all about ultimately about cause and effect. And like the first sentence of this book, uh, everything we do is our shadow that follows our body. It, you know, it will come back in a in the way that is exact and that is fitting, befitting of what we have been committed in the first place. So just an echo. Great, big voice, great echo. Small voice, small echo. No voice, no echo. All right. Um, so this one, uh, because this is such a blatant act of murder, um, sometimes directly, like killing, or sometimes indirectly, like pushing them towards the edge of point of no return where they commit uh, suicide or they were committing some, some sort of crime of passion or, or murders uh, or ramp rampage uh, out of anger uh, and part of the co reason might be uh, you for or not you as in the person who commit this uh, pushing towards uh, pushing that guy towards the edge so this are all considered as killing to seize property doesn't matter if the original um, story is, you know, they owe you money or they, uh, they how to say, they try to, uh, <clears throat> they, they do actually owe you something or something like that. Um, if, you know, that person can't have the ability to repay, there are legal ways to do it. There are proper ways to reprocess and all that. And obviously, if there is a leniency, if there is a repayment plan or any, any means possible, you can help them to get back on their feet. You should, and we should, as a as a fellow human being. Not everyone has a smooth sailing life, and understanding that there are standards, there are laws, there are boundaries, which is what the previous clause is about. However, we still also need to have that heart of kindness and compassion. We need to have a space for that, to, for other people to recover. All right. So this is what we call conscience of being a human. Um, you know, not everything is by the book. You cannot be hundred percent by the book. If you do that, you might as well tell the machines to take over our lives. Not, you don't have to run your own life anymore. Just follow the procedure, the AI. <laughs> right. So, still have to be um, how to say understand. So this one, one of the reason is like someone is already homeless. Someone is already losing a lot of their um, uh, grip of their life. You know, in physical and mental sense. And you as a person well off, that person might borrow 10k or few k from you, and you know, you, you you even though you're in the right on paper that to ask for for the repayment, if you're already well off and you already like you know, um, you already settled very good. So why would you want to do something that will push other people to the edge? Instead, you should help them to find a job or to find something that can. Get back, get them back to their feet, right? Of or, or you can forego the debt if you feel very charitable, or even in the very least, let them have the ability to repay in their own way. Even ten dollars, five dollars, cut the interest or no interest, stuff like that. You know, those there are many ways to do it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. Always think of that. Just because um, on paper they you, you you can pursue this kind of legal action and all that. Doesn't mean that you should be so foolhardy and or going against your conscience and do it. All right. So killing to seize property in another way is like killing your own conscience in order to uh, seize uh, benefits in front of your eyes. Those those profits, small profits. All right. So this is another layer. We can open up another door. You know, killing killing who? Yes, killing others. It's also killing yourself too. Killing a part of yourself. Uh, in order for, to get what? Uh, something that are not going to stay with you forever. Uh, a lot of them are committed in, at the moment of lost 
in greed, lost to uh, being, how to say, being puzzled or being dizzied by the, um, by the how to say, by the uh, frenzy. Yes, 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 frenzied by pursuit of of, uh, of lust, pursuit of um, uh, pursuit of greed uh, uh, for money, pursuit of lust for other people's body, pursuit of um, anger. You know, frenzied by anger, crime, uh, passion. You know, at the moment, so all these things are against your Buddha nature, your how to say, your um, clarity of mind, against against what is right, what is just, what is reasonable. Those things needs to be put in check. So these things happens because of that. Because if they think clearly, carefully, they wouldn't do that. Why would they do that? Right? They can be rich. Yes, by doing that kind of thing, but how long can they last? So this story tells you about this. A guy, uh, he's a ferryman in ancient. This happens in ancient China, uh, along a river. There's a ferryman. This ferryman um, has a uh, many passengers on board. One of them is very rich. He carries a uh, luggage of valuables, maybe based on his apparel. You know, he's wearing some very high class, high end silk stuff, and. When he's ferrying these passengers, there was a huge gust of wind blowing through the rivers, causing a lot of um, you know rock, uh, shaking. And during this moment of confusion, this uh, ferryman suddenly you know got caught uh, caught up with the greed after the uh, wealth of this um, wealthy uh, passenger. So he just. Follow the gust of wind and push him down the uh, the deep river stream, causing him to drown and die. So, obviously, you know when they reach the destination, the merchant is by himself. This rich passenger, it, he passed away, right? He he drowned, and no one knows about this because it was very confusing. Uh, it was shaking heavily because of the wind, uh, wind current. So this guy take this money f- for his own. And you know, sell it out, get a lot of money in return, and you know, he become rich man by uh, by the um, unwholesome means, by the evil means. So this is what uh, the, the 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 crime that he has of, uh, committed. That this is both a crime as well in human world as well as, as, well as karmic. Um, so he has a family, he has a children. When his children grown up. His son treat him so bad. No matter what happened, what he did, the son hates him so much. And this ferryman turned into a wealthy merchant. He uh, was very angry and confused. So he asked the gods in the temple. You know, he asked for he he go for the oracles, ask for fortune tellers. Yeah, to ask about why this happened to me. <laughs> this fortune teller tells him, uh, "You remember what you did last that year." Where you were fair, when you were still a ferryman, uh, what you did during the big gust of wind to this uh, poor guy, um, you know, that's that was twenty years ago. Ask your heart, why this happening to you? Immediately he he woke up from his uh, twenty years of delusions. <laughs> twenty years of delusion, mate. How silly is that? Twenty years he deluded himself for twenty years. And he's he's using all that money, right? That he got in the un, uh, in the wrong way. Yes, he enjoys some of it, but a lot of them also spent on his children. Guess who who that children is? Who who was the part? What what was the past life of that children? <laughs> of his children, of his of his son. So, twenty years ago, you, that memory came back. That means he woke up to it. Oh, I have. Uh, he has committed a murder. Basically, a murder. Uh, you know, murder of a rich merchant who happened to be his passenger, and this this uh, you know in this, uh, this merchant has been uh, reborn as his son to seek revenge and also spend the money that he that was belonging to him. As as usual, right? You have your own son. Obviously, you can spend a lot of money on that kid. So guess where the money goes in the end. So this is a story. What what they're trying to tell you? Uh, this is the the read between the lines, you know. <laughs> so.
So he was shocked. He realized that, and he understand that this son is the reincarnation of the man he murdered. And so, yeah, he was very scared. He, he did not dare to return to home to his family. Uh, and he, this is this is quite. They didn't go in detail, but he he died in a very painful way. Uh, so, karma. Basically, that's that's karma, guys. So, the money that he stole, yes, he enjoyed, but how how for how long? Twenty years, and all these twenty years, he spent a lot on his children, and that children happens to be the actual owner of the wealth that he uh, stole from, and then end up dying in a very uh, uh, painful way. So fools, that's what I'm saying. Fools, don't be a fool. So this kind of money that you know the ill-gotten gains you know doesn't matter what way causing other people to bankrupt frauding or you know uh, tricking people we call it um, plot you know plotting to trick people um, to give up their money bank accounts stuff like that or even even to your um, close relatives you're trying to you know use this kind of uh, relationships to coerce them or to goad them into spending uh, money that is not necessary or not needed these are to some extent linked to this one you know you're killing them or killing their livelihood they repent their life on it so these are part of this uh, transmission so the karma of getting money you gotten gain is you will never be able to spend it at peace you will be able. You will be. You will never be able to enjoy it. What's the whole point of doing that? Look at all this scam call that calls at you three times a day, talking about some embassies calling you to renew passport. Please give us your details. What are these people? These are not stupid people. These are smart people. They devise so many plans, so many uh, tricks, phishing, and all that. You know, uh, my bank keep yelling, uh, yapping about. You know, you need to be careful about this. Why are these people doing that? You know, they even set up a call center to do that. Those are not foolish people, right? I can say most of them have uni degree as well. <laughs> End up in this position. Why? They want to enjoy what is not theirs. They want to. They want to speed up the process from grind to gain, grinding every day, working hard, and then gain it. They want to speed this up. Will they be able to get it? How many people actually can get it? All right. Even if they get it, how long can they have it? All right. Even they have like this man, who buries his conscience deep within. How long will that take? You know, it will come out to surface one day, one year, ten years, one hundred years. The length is depends on how deep your fortune is as well, karmically speaking. So you can't escape. No one can escape, all right? And everything you earn, you gotten gains and all that will eventually be spent the same way that you get it. You uh, it will spend in a way that is not your likings. It will disappear. And in Chinese, there are five persons who will take away your money. Number one is hospital, your health. Number two is your government, your tax or police, offenses, crimes, offenses mostly. Most people, tra tra uh, traffic and all that. Suddenly you are not, you are blurred. You don't understand what's happening, and then you pass through the red light. That's it. <laughs> or suddenly your phone happened to drop on your on your lap. <laughs> That's what happened to my colleague. So, so suddenly, you know, like, oh, someone's calling you, you instinctively pick up the phone while you're still driving, and the camera just. That's it, gone. $1,000, $300. And then what What else? So, these are small things, okay? The big one, the real ill gotten gain, is um, your son, you know. Okay, number three. Number one is hospital or any healthcare. I think Auntie uh, Yenzi would be more, would feel this impact even more in the States. Healthcare, right? <laughs> and then the other one is the, the police or the government, the authorities. Number three is bushfire. Katrina. All this nice name we give to those hurricanes. They'll take away. COVID. Your business suddenly picks up and then pff, gone. 
All right, how are you, Sui? Number four. Number four. What else? Auntie, do you have any... Uh, uh, I, last one I know. We, all, we both know last one refers to this. What's number four? I forgot. Killing? Oh, flood. Yeah, natural disasters. That's number three. But uh, I forgot about number four. The last one is... Your own, fa- your own son or daughter, <laughs> your own children, and this one specifically refers to those that are not, they are not the, not the good kind, the, the the needs, you know, in Chinese word means the unfilial son, unfilial daughters, the children that cause you a lot of worries, unnecessary worries, excessive worries, like causing troubles for you, uh, and ends up you have to spend a lot of money to bail him out or her out or spend a lot of money a lot of effort just to get that you know on uh, get your children um, in track something like that so this money you know if you got it in a in a in a you got if you have a you gotten gain it will go out the same way you got it so same thing so earn earn honestly basically is what you're trying to say all right so this man we already seen that you know after 20 years he get nothing and a lot of pain before and after his death. Um, I'm pretty sure that during these 20 years, his son, right, giving him a lot of headaches, a lot of heart attack, just the attitude. And then he's your son. He's not some stranger on the street. Uh, you argue for five hours or five minutes and then you disappear and never seen him again or her again. And then you may be angry. And they will cause that pain and heartache every single minute. Because you have to see them every day. You have to deal with them every day. All right. And then you have to like, you know, trying to think why this happens. You know, I did not do anything, but he's still very angry to me. And that is another form of torture, isn't it? If we don't believe in the afterlife, let's think about before, during this process. And then after he's dying, we all know where he's going if he's killing. So it's obvious. So yeah. And then many people don't actually do that. Of course. No, not everyone was trying to do that. But what I'm trying to say is this kind of um, you gotten gain, no matter how small, how big it is, um, they have karmas. So just don't do it at all. You know, even the smallest thing like um, trying to take advantage of uh, your organization or your employment uh, in the way that is not intended you know uh, use the resources that are meant for business or meant for public or in government agency meant for the uh, your work but you use it in your own personal capacity all right those those resources they are you have to say they're supposed to be used for business or for for your service but you take it out without permission or take it out and then for your own use, personal use. So those things might not refer to this uh, series as this one. This is also another way of losing your um, uh, fortune as well. So be very clear about that. Have a, have a clear boundary. What is private, what is public. You know, public is money, public use. Your own stuff, your own use. You know, your own private stuff, you use it privately. Never mix them up. It's really bad. Uh, let's continue. Qing Ren Qu Wei. Qing, using plot and schemes to seize other positions in public office. I'm pretty sure we've all seen that a lot in the TVs, right? All of this prime minister change, you know. It doesn't have to be killing. It have to be like, you know, like um, a lot of toppling and all that. Of course, the worst case is like actually in those dictatorial regime, they're actually killing one another and just to get money, just to get power, just to get position. Um, so this too refers to th- taking things th- in a way that is not right. You know, taking things in the in the underhanded way. Um, so this second sentence, um, uh, we must understand first the whole thing of you know how did holding of fortune, holding of karma. Uh, in the end of the day, how far you can reach in, say, a corporate ladder, or how far you can reach in a government government organization, or how far you can reach in a big organization, including Sangha, 
you know, including the Buddha Sangha. You know, why someone can be the uh, abbot of five temples, why someone can only be a uh, only a member of a temple. We're, we're just talking about pure fortune turn. I'm not talking about cultivation or anything. That's not. We're not going there. We're just talking about pure results. This person managed this many things, this portfolio, all right, all right. including everything, including uh, sanghas. So we're talking about the world organization, like like the corporates, right? Why is this person at that level? Why is this person, no matter how hard they try, they still can't reach that level, right? If we really use the ancient Chinese term, this, is ha- this has to do with fortunes, karma. Fortune as in your own, um, how do I say, kind of like bank account. How many uh, fortune you have accumulated in the past life, right? Some people can be multinational CEO, uh, Tim Cook, something like that. Why do they become like that? Because they have accumulated a lot of uh, fortunes of giving. Hence, they have a fortunes of now they received uh, what they read, what they sell. You know, they reap what they sell. So it's understanding this. Everyone has a chance. Not now. <laughs> Sometimes it takes many lifetimes to get that level. Um, obviously for us we want to go to pure land and that also takes a lot of lifetime just to sit down here and hear Amito for one time let alone many times and then there's another layer of fortunes required to actually able to chant Amito for all the time without disrupting you by your own wandering thoughts and there's another layer of actually uh, not being interrupted by uh, you know there, there are many there are many um, factors and none of them escapes karma None of them escapes cause, condition, effect. So you know, over here, we talk about uh, someone using all these plots, schemes, might even commit murders just to get you know, power, money, uh, positions, uh, because they don't understand this. It's easy to, to be drowned in this you know, frenzy you know, for it. Frenzy for money, you can see in Wall Street. You can see in all the stock exchange exchange in the world. You can even see in the bank, or you can see in me, in in the in the in the in the position I'm going for. Those, you know, those people pursue monies. Obviously, we're not saying that it's bad or anything. If they do it right, they are being fair, fine. <clears throat> but what I'm trying to say is, if 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 you have something more than what you need, I, I share a post in Chinese. Unfortunately, I don't know. I don't think I have, have I have the energy to translate everything in English, but that story goes by a just just to complement this uh, point. There is a farmer, all right, who worked really hard, who you know do his best, you know, try, uh, follow the laws and harvest crops, pay taxes in the forms of crops every seasons, and this demon. Uh, this um, there is a demon or uh, uh, Shibo Wang, all right, uh, demon king. He was worried that uh, there are very few um, people joining his um, acolytes, you know, as a fellow uh, uh, Mozu uh, as his fellow uh, followers. His followers are dwindling, so he's trying to recruit more people into his rank. Remember, being a demon's uh, accomplice, you also need to have enough fortunes to join them. He don't just take anyone. So he saw this farmer not bad, being uh, quite good. And he's like, how, how do we uh, seduce him into the side, to my side, to become my followers? So first they use a lot of um, hardship. They put a lot of hardship on the farmer. You know, put, they create a lot of, um, you know, rain that drowns the crop or they create a lot of uh, drought that kills the crop but the farmer persists because they are hardy folks folks right they um they used to this so they can power through all the hardships you know they without grunting and they understand and they just keep working hard and they survive so the demon king was worried it's like this is not working why not you go with them rather than against them give them what they want so they start to give them you know nice weather uh, give them a, a pot of gold in the ground, all right. And so the farmer gets better and affluent, sell the gold and become rich. So he start to trade, you know, because he has more capital now. Uh, welcome to our world, and he's trying to gain profits and profits more and more and more. And then 
the demon he don't, don't even do anything he's just watching him steam rolling he just get more wealth and more wealth more than the, than he need he start to live comfortably start to wear uh, very nice clothes start to enjoy you know something that he will never enjoy as a farmer and then you know as he go on get more rich and and, and richer all right he started to do something that is that that he would never do when he was a farmer you know uh, he has uh, you know extramarital affairs you know because he's rich attractive in terms of wealth I don't know about the looks they, they didn't describe it but what I'm saying is you know wealth attracts a lot of things right so there you go extramarital affairs and then what happens bribing officials trying to get more money even more money so he he obviously has uh, lived well above uh, the average of his uh, of his peers, and way above his needs. He's already in the one territory, not need territory, and that thing keep expanding. So until one day, the time has come, he passed away, and the demon king says, "Welcome to my <laughs> place." So uh, he's like, "Why?" He was shocked. Why was he in? You know, hell meeting demon king and because of his wrongdoings uh, during his wealth riches when he got rich when he got wealthy he started to behave uh, against the precepts against what is fair and just uh, just and he committed a lot of uh, bad deeds so the demon kings laugh and say that's how you do it give them more than what they need and you have more uh, a complex uh, followers of the demons at your side in a sense the people who go against their conscience so this is how it works those you ask more than what you need or you're not understanding your place all right it will end up you might even get it in the end but what you get in the end is yours anyway sooner or later and you get it in such an underhanded way you lost all your uh, uh, you actually get less than what you originally would receive in the, in the end of the day you got you you, were, you ended at a loss after all this hard work plotting machinations uh, trying to do um, trying to harm people in order to get what you want all right so if you can get it that means it's already yours it's just a matter of time but now you just want to speed up the grind and the gain and the end, the, the result is you get the, what you receive is already discounted version of what you would receive originally if after all this hard work you still can't get it you got caught or you got killed or you got you know retaliated that means this is not yours at, the, at all and then you spend all this effort to gain a, a lot more troubles back to you back to you so this is another level of foolishness and what buddha keeps saying yu tzu, yu tzu, yu tzu in the sutra foolishness fools it's not just because he's, he's, he's scolding for, for the sake of it. Because this is actually what's happening. All right? From a perspective of a fully enlightened one. They've seen cause and effect. All right? They've seen how this goes. And then they, that's why they have this book to educate us. And whether you believe it or not, it's also up to your fortune. <laughs> if you have fortune, you will take this seriously. You will understand how to work around, how to work properly, how to cultivate properly. This is not telling you you should not have wealth. You should not, uh, you know, uh, pursue um, whatever desires you have in life in, in terms of that. Yes, in Buddhism, we have a strict requirement. If you want to be Buddha, there's, an, uh, there's a different case. I'm talking about majority of the people. All right, majority of the people who want to go about their lives, you know, going up another level, improve their quality of life. Those things can be done, but you have to follow what is right and just you have to follow the precepts say the Jewish community have a very strong sense of giving right that's why there's a lot of rich people who are Jewish why because their religion that uh, in the Torah book they always have that emphasis on giving you have to give you have to help the communities right so that's a lot of uh, major religions they all do that why do they say that because they didn't say that you cannot have wealth they did say, you know, uh, demons and go are the same thing. I don't know the word, um, but <clears throat> it's because, you know, power and money only um, 
expand or exaggerates what you already are. All right. I like this phrase. Um, I'm sure there are many counterpoints, but what I'm saying is if you follow the precepts, follow the 10 virtuous deeds, follow the teachings uh, of the sages, of Buddha, uh, of your um, religious um, uh, teachers, uh, the, 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 the teachings, um, then or, or follow what is fair and just, okay, in the public way, what is fair and just to others, you know, you will get what you want. It's just a matter of time. Depends on how sincere you are, and how uh, how to say. The more, you, the less you ask, the more you get. The more you ask, well, you just get what you ask. That's a limit. The limit is only what you ask. If you don't ask for the return, or if you don't purposely trying to seek for return, what you get will be unexpected to you. And if you have the right morals right cultivation, cultivation foundation what you get you will use it to help even more people all right you will still you will still be benefited it's 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 two-way street right you are also part of everyone you know everyone's part of you you're part of the community community is also part of you you know you can't be isolated from that you still have to work with others people and if you benefit everyone eventually you get benefited from a better environment you know social environment uh, so this this kind of thing it's it's important if you think it in a in a deep wise manner. So all this is because we only focus on short term, too short, the too narrow sighted, um, and you know including powers, including positions, including you know um, uh, people who are uh, currently in the bottom level. No matter what where you are, you know this one is trying to say that. Don't have to re- succumb to this. There's no need, especially right now in in political office is is even worse. Or in the in the higher level, there's a lot of this um, plot and schemes. Might be I don't know. I'm I'm not there. But what I'm trying to say is it happens. It might be there, but don't succumb yourself to it. You know, if you can't, you know, like, do you want to trade a peace of mind, a good night's sleep for uh, for something that? will be taken away in a few years time or something that appears glamorous and awesome in the first year or second year but end up having to drink 10 cups of coffee every morning just to get by having to go through thousands of meetings just to deal with all these people stakeholders just to answer what hundreds of emails that has sometimes there's no substance and just to fake love any 200 more times Think about it, all right? All right. What I'm trying to say is, you, 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 you should not like how to say. I'm not saying that you should not go up, right? What I'm trying to say is, just, just be where you are, be comfortable where you are, and push it a little bit more. Understand where you are. So once your moral and character grows, your fortune will grow. This is what Leo Fan is trying to say. This is one thing, not two things. If you're character, your morals, your commitment to your um, morals grow and proven, tested. That means no matter how much money they give it to you, you won't be that farmer who lost his mind. Especially the, the people who got too much wealth in one go is very terrible. Then someone who got it slowly, steadily, right? And they have the mature mindset of how to deal with it. They can handle it. So this is, this is what we call a deep Sheep carries more treasures than a shallow boat. <laughs> Don't be a shallow boat, be a sheep. How do you be a sheep? Develop yourself, be better. How do you develop yourself? Read more Tai Shan Gai Pin. Read more Sutra. Get more um, advice from Master Ching Kong, from the wise people. If you have religion, listen more to the, you know, the wise people from your congregation just because the same religion doesn't mean they are wise sometimes they might they might give a lot of their own opinion you need to follow the teachings the wise teachings all right and then what what is wise teachings those things when you put it in real life it's accurate it works that's how you test it there's testable verifiable thing all right not not floaty bubbly stuff or what we appreciate as floaty bubbly stuff but high up in the air might be because we are not there yet 
we're not wise enough. So now do something that you can. Giving, you can give. All right? Be compassionate. You can be a bit more compassionate than yesterday. Those practical stuff, those foundation, those building blocks of your ship, those are number one thing. No matter what religion or lack of religion or whatever philosophy you you, 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 you subscribe to, you need to have a building blocks and you need to commit to it. This is better than plots and schemes. It's useless. There's another saying, let me tell you. People who are honest, people who are um, steadfast, you know, in their morals and commitments, they are, they are like the three roots. They are, they, are, they, are, they are very firm. All right? Those people who do all the plots and schemes, you know, they thinking outside their root, outside their true nature, outside their conscience, uh, thinking, trying to, you know, drill, uh, find a loophole, trying to, you know, uh, uh, outsmart all these all these fluctuations, they may f- seem glamorous or anything, all right? It's like, um, let's talk about martial arts, right? Someone who actually knows Kung Fu, who actually knows martial arts, you know, they don't need to do all this, all right? It's like one of those Stephen Chow movies, all right? They don't need to do all these uh, flashy moves. They are not doing it for show. They know the whole point of martial art is strike when the enemy is not uh, aware. And strike it and make sure it strike hard. And they, all they do is practice that one punch or practice their footwork, practice their foundation, practice steadiness, practice adaptiveness. Not flashy performance. I'm not saying, I'm not dissing it. I'm saying that those flashiness, they are all for show. If they are meant for show, then we respect that as a dance performer. But it's not martial art. All right. So compare these two, right? And then you apply these plot and schemes, those flashiness those uh, over the top thinking and all that they're smart people only smart people can do that alright I can't so when they compare these two right this real martial artist and this person who just uh, a show showman who happened to use martial art as the facade when they face each other that the guy who knows how to put up a show they might appear very cool you know very 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 like in Hollywood or whatever movie you saw like very cool and all that but when it comes to actual confrontation or actual real life test, that guy just give one punch and that guy's already fell, fell down on the ground. I think there's, a, there's an analogy given by uh, <clears throat> one of the master, just the way I say it, I butcher it, sorry guys. So be that person who has actual content. Might not look flashy, might look stupid, might look like an oaf, um, doesn't matter. <clears throat> I mean, form, all right, Will, will grow as you have substance it will grow by itself don't worry about form now worry about substance substance over form alright substance people with substance um, will have a lot of wealth and depth to draw upon when crisis happens you know when um, when things happen and this is what makes them worthy of high office worthy of better position because they can handle things the higher you get the more excuse my French, crap you have to deal with. The more, un, the, more tr- the more stuff you have to deal with. And if you don't have that, that strong sense of foundation, how are you going to survive that? All right? We can fish around, we can try to, you know, uh, justify this, justify that, or we can try to say that, oh, I'm, <clears throat> how do you say, um, cover it up, you know, just because you're in high office. One day you fall down, or one day you will leave the office people will start looking into your profile. They will start thinking, what is this guy doing when he's in office? That's where everything comes out. Right? That's not good. Right? So, these are useless. Right? Plots and schemes, useless. You got on top, right? You might do something nice because you're smart and all that. And then, um, but you end up with a lot of debt to pay. If you kill people in the result, you also have to pay with your life. There's no point for it. All right. That's why there's a saying that good people don't become politicians. Or good people, 好人不当官, or something like that. Or uh, actual good people, or actual, of course there's exception, Fan Zhong Yan, all that good people. But what I'm saying is like, a lot of people who are, who have substance, real substance, they don't really want to go out and be office. Usually they were pushed to be the office. They were like, oh, you have to do it. Then they were like, oh, okay, fine. 
the best people for the job is the people who reluctantly take it not people who plot for it Anyway, back to the point. Um, yeah. Hmm. So, the, so, so, yeah. This is this happens in in everywhere, and they, of course they use the ancient Chinese um, histories. Uh, a, a person go by a, a a great minister of the Song court. Um, he uh, how to say he was uh, very uh, jealous of the of his um, other colleagues you know he's doing well in the court and he's rising in position and polar popularity so this uh, me mr. me is trying to uh, kick him out you know, that kick him out of his position causing him losing his job or being demoted by you know slander giving the boss who's the boss emperor the emperor the wrong information or the slander he's slandering his colleague of course the emperor is not really uh, clear on his head um, and he you know taken to believe the slanders against his colleagues so he um, fired you know, Mr. B's colleagues as a result of Mr. B's um, slander and instead using Mr. Me replacing his colleague uh, in this important task so basically using plots and skip to seize others position so when this happened you know the Prime Minister uh, aware of this you know what happening on this among the ministers and he's trying to um, how does it help uh, the uh, fired innocent man, the, the innocent man to you know to restore his name, uh, and the emperor has awakened, has awakened. Emperor is, uh, is aware of his mistake, misjudgment, uh, at the, with the help of the prime minister, and immediately uh, exile this slanderous Mr. Me to a place far, far away. When they say far, far away, it is far, far away, guys. They're not coming back to the capital for another, for the rest of their life. There's no aeroplane. It's not one hour flight. It's not 12 hour flight. It's 10 years, 20 years until either they kill themselves. Oh, sorry, I'm very rude on this. They, a lot of them, they just not kill themselves. Maybe they sit there, sulk, sad, die. So basically die in a miserable way. Because what? There's no TV. There's nothing. All right. There's no plane. All they do is sitting there and then outside their comfort of their home, they were not allowed to go back to their hometown, stay in a stranger place, all right, far away from the comforts and conveniences of the capital or their hometown because they have their family and alone, maybe with bare necessities. Of course, you're going to be depressed. And this is what happened to him. This is what happened to many people who were exiled. So it's, when, when I heard exile, I di didn't think too deep into it. I thought exile, they're still alive. But sometimes staying alive in that condition is worse than death. There's no resolution. We all watch movies. We all want the ending. We all binge through 12 episodes because we want the ending. And imagine living a life like that, hanging around. It's, it's a pain. So this is what happened to this Mr. Me. And Dui Chao Bing Rui, so restoring this innocent man's um, name and his position back to his previous position because he did not do the what it was he was slandered on. So he's innocent. So after this, we understand that this is actually happening, all right? This is in Song Dynasty, all right? This is the real people. So just to prove this happens, karma hits very quick, unexpected, just like your shadows following your body. It's always there. It's just a matter of time. It shows up. All right. It will be there. It's not. It's not. Might be. There's no theoretical calculation. It is there. Just like your shadow. It's already there next to you. I have to be strong on this word because this is that level of conviction you need to know about karma, and hence it will help you to guide your character towards the path. Hopefully, that will only help you to grow into a better person you are. Obviously, attracting even better opportunities, better positions, 
right? If you're interested in this, or I hope that, of course, attracting, you know, eventually a chance to go to Pyeongchang for us. All right, nothing is nothing comes cheap. Everything takes effort, grind, again and again, again and again. You know, everything, every profession, every cultivation, every religion. It takes, it takes that focus every day. Sharpen the sword. Sharpen the sword. Amitofo, amitofo. Sharpen that sword. All right. On and when you sharpen the sword, just like the real martial artist, they have footwork done properly, the punch ready properly. When things actually happen, when seriously unfortunate things happen, they can stand on their ground. When the real, for martial artists, the real fight happens, they know how important their leg is. The hands without leg, they can't stand. Without able to stand, they basically in the passive position. In the passive position, basically means you're getting punched or you're getting attacked. So with a foot strong footwork, you can stand on the ground. You can avoid. You can evade. You can do so many things. Without footwork, you lost. So just like this, martial artist analogy, our life as well. Without our leg on the ground in our life, we're just gonna be sitting there and let the event take over us. It still happened, but what, what, but when, with with strong conviction and faith in your cultivation in our context, pure land cultivation, this thing will not take over you, or all these plot and schemes that people are trying to suggest to you, whisper in your ear, or you happen to think of because of your past. I mean, in your thought, wandering thoughts will not take place. Instead, only one clear goal is there, or very bright um, mindset is there, something like that. All right, all right. So, yes, hurting people means hurting yourself. Isn't? Is there anything more clear than that story of Mr. Mees trying to slander his colleague? No. And this is considered light. Ex- being exiled is a small thing compared to what's going to happen on the next guy. Next story. In Tang Dynasty, a dynasty before the Song, Mr. Li Ling Pu, when he was the prime minister. Mr. Lee is the prime minister. He always, always like to repeatedly slander people. Always give a false accusation, right, to strengthen their own position. At the time, at the um, border of the empire, Tang Empire, there was a, um, you know, there was a lot of uh, general, and because these are important. Boundaries of the empire. They always assign important people, important figures to take care of the borders, and only people with great eminence, great um, achievements at that, at this field. You know, securing the borders and then pushing back the enemy can become can be candidate for the prime minister, and Mr. Li Lingpu. All right. Mr. Lee, who is a prime minister, um, trying to block other people from taking over his place or be, become appointed to some position close to him. So basically, he's holding the position to himself, greedy. So he always gives the um, wrong information to his boss, the emperor. And, you know, he keeps saying that, oh, this, you know, scholarly officials, Wen Chen, uh, those um, ministers who only who have only background in civil service rather than martial or military service, those civil minister uh, civil servants, um, they are all very um, cowardly. You know, they never faced war or battle before. They will not be able to defend against the enemy if we were assigned to the borders. If, however, you used, because why did he say that? Okay, let me finish the front translation. What he say is, civil servants are all cowards, right? They will not be able to defend against the enemy should the enemy at the border of the empire invades. However, if you use, or however, if your majesty make use of the foreigners, foreign armies, to become the general of the borders, who secure the borders, all right, then they will be able to defend your empire. And however, the emperor did not think too much. He's just like, oh, okay, okay. He just take the advice without giving much thought to it. Think of these words, man. Instead of using people who 
knows your country, who has a stake in your nation, all right, who has a family in your capital, uh, who understands how the politics works, and who also obviously they will be trained, right? If you if you're not strong, that's what gyms are for, right? That's what military service are for. Where the military got their mil- people from, from the civil servants, from civilians. So, what what instead of using people who have a stake in preserving this country, all right, to become the main person in charge of securing the border, he suggests someone from the outside who has nothing to do with your countries to take over the position, just like. Imagine the United States. They take over someone who has nothing to do with US, who is just simply there for the money, so soldiers of fortune, to become the Minister of Defense. Of course, it will be an out- uproar. This is exactly what happened to Tang Dynasty's position. They take someone who has absolutely nothing to do with that and to become a five-star general staff, chief of, chief of generals, all right, five-star. Secure, uh, taking care of all the defense, all the uh, you know, uh, you know, all the all the all the layouts, military layouts. So this is what. So what happens when the emperor took took the advice and just take it because he's trying to block the advancement, promotion of his colleagues, of his peers. That's why. That's why he say that. Okay. So, the result is the historical rebellion of An Lushan. I think we all heard of that. The An Lushan Rebellion. That thing, that guy, caused the decline of the empire. It would never go back to its previous glory. That's it. That's the end. He just takes someone, and that one person happened to be An Lushan. And this this guy has no stake in the empire. Obviously, he he won't rebel straight away. You give him all the power, of course, he will enjoy it. He will appear subservient. He will appear serving the interests of your country. And when he got, you know, all this actual... KPIs going, doing very well. What do you do? Point the, point the sword back to you. Even though they managed to push back and cow the rebellion, it's gone. The country is gone. It's weakened. It's just on its way to to decline. So this is what happened. Um, in order to protect himself and not, we we don't talk about these people on high up. Those just common people, in caught up in these conflicts like what you see in Ukraine and Russia better right now those common people caught up in the conflicts are the ones who suffer the most it's always like that kings do the fighting peasants do the dying up there the politician do the fighting alright all the killings but who did actually do the killing and who actually do the dying the people on the ground conscriptions partial conscriptions the soldiers alright including yeah, the soldiers who were recruited because of their economic backgrounds, stuff like that. So, yes, one person, one person with that mindset can cause all this. Obviously, he's not the ultimate cause, and we can go back and say that country is already in that boat. The the people, the organization is not there. Yes, there, there's that, but this person is the catalyst as well. Why? Because he just can't bear to have the thought of someone replacing him, even though he can't live past 50 or 60 anyway. That's that's the mindset that needs to be careful about. All right. He's, so what happened? Um, because of his um, because of his um, un, uh, bad suggestion, he is now being charged with conspiracy and high treason against the country. So these two charge was against him. And um, I think that guy has already died before he got charged. So it's too late, you know, right? This wrong uh, suggestion was taken. The emperor was also very dizzy. He's not thinking straight. So, so he was charged after his death, all right? So what happened is he take, they open the tomb and take out his corpse and do the, um, how to say, do the, Beheading, you were post mortem, post mortem beheading, symbolic gesture basically. Um, yeah. 这袁飞是他所犯的罪啊！这袁飞是他所犯的罪。Yeah. Ah.、Uh, he didn't. Okay, he didn't actually cause a rebellion, but, but he didn't directly cause it. But because of his jealousy, 
it, it, it becomes a catalyst. So, and using a wrong person in the job, you know, wrong person does not does not necessarily mean they are not competent. They are competent, but they're not they are not working for this country. They are working there for their own interests. So you you don't use a random Joe into a position. You need to filter and filter and select right people for the job, especially important one that affects millions of lives. It needs to be a person with stakes in this preserving this country, preserving this nation. That's why they always have citizens as a requirement. It's a basic requirement, all right, to join and no dual citizenship, nothing. You have to serve only one, be lawyer. All right, so there you go. Mm. That's it. I think I'll, I'll, I'll cut it here because we already pushed the point so far. Um, yeah, I think that's it. This thing, um, if I want to briefly say, the first one is already Geneva. It sounds like Geneva Convention, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the modern equivalent of Geneva Convention, the the the, the rules of war, you know, between different nations. They should not kill the POWs. Um, they should not um, causing harm to those people who are no longer. Uh, fighting you, it should always be you know, um, letting uh, live and let live. Uh, obviously, when emotions run high, <sighs> these things happens. Right? You see, World War Two is the best example, and uh, both sides have committed that. Obviously, we know which side committed we more worse uh, than the others, but um, two wrong doesn't make one right. So this whole point is trying to tell, try to tell us live and let, let live you know if you happen to be in the position of uh, becoming the military uh, in charge of this or in the position of you know securing this POW then don't um, they already uh, actually um, try and surrender for real there are situations where they don't like in World War II there's a lot of Marines US Marines in Japan trying to fight the, the Japanese and they were very ferocious uh, especially they trying to trick in surrendering and then they have a hand grenade just open up and then blow up the whole platoon basically you know sacrificing one to kill many and from now on from then onwards every every time they have a prisoner of war they will just shot instead of letting them leave so there are always special cases and like I say it's already unfortunate for war to happen alright so if there is a real intention to surrender um, then we should always preserve uh, lives over taking it and this applies even now when you look at Ukraine um, there are atroc atrocities happening all the time uh, at the height of emotions and height of war everyone's trying to fight uh, getting stressed and all that and end up doing something they no point of return something they would not normally would not do um, so this one tells us that you know it looks like common sense to civilian, um, but when when in the height of war and in the height of conflicts, right now we see in the Ukraine and Russia, we need to appreciate how important it is to preserve that clear conscience while still fighting and defending your nations. All right, losing this part, you know, it will only cause more grievance. Future wars, reverse will happen. Karma. It's always back to karma. So, yeah. All right. We'll continue on this sec uh, section next week. Thank you so much, uh, Auntie. And uh, whoever is watching now in future, will be watching or who is watching. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I think, you know, um, we we have gone through quite a bit now. Uh, it's not a um, how to say small in content it's short in words but it's 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 deep in content it has so much thing in there you can talk about so much perspective that's why i like to have the convert discussion when we have a youth group uh, version because it brings up a lot of um, uh, different levels of um, understanding different levels of application uh, so that it's not stuck with me just talking about government and all this high level stuff those are important but um it should always be 
keep in mind you can use this in your daily life uh, if you can apply in your daily life you probably should um, you know think deeper and you know make good use of it to regulate our life ah me to for 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 may the merits and virtues accrue from this work adorn the buddha's pure land repay the four kinds of kindness above and relieve the sufferings of three paths below may those who see and hear of this aspire by their body mind we vow to be born together in the land of ultimate bliss amitofo